Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm so excited to introduce you to my guest today, Courtney Amberg of CourtneyAmbergFitness.com, who provides fitness and nutrition coaching to busy women who are tired of stressing and feeling guilty about their bodies, food, and exercise. She herself struggled with body confidence and hating herself into the change she wanted. After years of secretly taking diet pills, diuretics, and cycles of binging and restricting, she said enough was enough picked up some dumbbells, and was determined to find a different way. Courtney got her degree in health and exercise science at the College of New Jersey and has been working with women for close to a decade. She's obsessed with strength training, women becoming powerful, dancing to raunchy hip-hop, and never misses the challenge or 90-day fiancé when it's on. You can download her free guide, Fit in 15, and learn how you can get strong, fit, and lean in only 15 minutes a day at fitin15workouts.com, or check out her eight-week nutrition course designed to teach and implement healthy nutrition habits so you can stop dieting forever, which you guys know I'm a big fan of helping you do. So I'm really excited to have you as my guest today, Courtney. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. This is awesome. I'm like <laughs> pumped to be here. So I have only had one other fitness professional on the show who does not work at my company, Fit Armadillo, and that's because I'm very choosy because I want to make sure people are getting like, you know, good advice. And so I've loved following you and what you've been sharing, especially mostly on Facebook, although I know you're probably not just on Facebook. So really excited to have you on the show. And I guess, you know, maybe you could share a little bit with the listeners some of your best tips for staying in shape and, you know, not going crazy in the process, which is what I think a lot of other fitness professionals kind of promote, which is why they're not on the show. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm like extra honored now, now that I learned that. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm all about is I don't want, I want to free women from this like yo-yo or this mindset cycle of like almost making training or working out or moving your body feel more like a punishment or more like something you dread doing and more into something that you enjoy doing and that brings more to your life and that is that little sliver of time that's just for you and it helps you be a better person all around and the same thing with nutrition because we also get so crazy about that stuff and you'll hear all these crazy diets out there and and what the sad thing is that coaches and trainers especially I find in the online space know that people want results like tomorrow so right. they're going to give you like a two week or a five day plan where I was actually listening to the radio today. The girl's like, yeah, I'm on this military diet. I have a half a hot dog, like a half a banana and like ice cream for dinner. And like, that's all I eat all day. But it's like these types of things that I want to teach people. Like you don't have to go to extremes right. to live the life that you want. Um, and that's kind of what I really touch on when I do nutrition coaching, because my goal is to help people learn the real and the right ways to like incorporate healthy nutrition into their lifestyle in a way that not doesn't take away from their life, but makes it even better and makes it something that like you can do forever and you never have to go on a diet again. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's exactly what I try to do with my own clients. And so it's awesome to, to see you doing that. And I don't know if you want to share anything from your personal journey. Cause like, as I read in your bio, you know, this is something that you had struggled with being caught up with some of these myths and, and tips and tricks yourself. So I don't know if you want to share anything about that. Yeah. Just to, Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. When I started talking more about kind of my struggles with my body image and just kind of like feeling comfortable in my own skin and comparing myself to other women, um, I get a lot of people come back, like 95% of women are like, I too struggle with that. And it can range from all different age groups. Mm. I think it's very rare that you find someone who's like, I have like my one best friend. She's always like, I've never had any of those thoughts. And I'm like, (laughs) I wish I was you. Like, that is amazing. Yeah. Um, But I was kind of like the super artsy, super nerdy, chubby girl growing up. 
And I never, my mom was always trying to put me in sports, but I hated it. I remember I did karate, but I wasn't <laughs> flexible enough. So I was like, I got to get out of here. I did softball. I was like, this is so boring. So I did all these things. And I think when you start to realize, and I, and I think it's for girls that you start to realize very soon or very early on that you don't look or you don't compare or you don't match up to other girls. Um, and that starts to really weigh on me. I remember being like sixth or seventh grade and being like, mm -hmm the reason why I can't connect with people or the reason why I don't have friends or the reason why I'm not being asked to like go to the mall on a Saturday afternoon is for some reason I attached it to my body and I attached mm -hmm. it to the way that I looked. And this kind of followed me throughout my whole life. And, and I know I don't have that many years on me, but <laughs> it made such an impact on who I was that it, it kind of brought me to where I am. So I ended up going to art school um, for college and in high school, I threw myself into sports just because I wanted to be skinny. Not because, remember, I wasn't good at it. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I was like, so terrified to put myself out there. Um, so I played four sports in high school. I dropped like 35 pounds in a matter of months. I remember the nurse like called me into the office and was like, this oh, is healthy. Like, what is going on? My mom's like, you're anorexic. Like it was just a mess. Oh geez. Um, which I was not, but I was definitely not eating enough. I was definitely right. training like all the magazines tell you to train, run three hours, then go to practice then eat an Oreo for dinner, like stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. and that kind of followed me throughout my whole life until I went to college and I started lifting my first weights the right way under my um, strength and conditioning coach because I played lacrosse there. And that's kind of where things started to shift because I wasn't anymore so focused on what I look like. I was more focused on like performance. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really started to grow. And that's where the passion for, you know, the big picture is helping other people feel, or especially women, feel good about themselves and like... Mm -hmm learn to love nutrition and fitness as the avenue to becoming a better person and to feeling better about yourself. Because if you can show up bigger, if you can show up more powerful, if you feel confident, and I just get goosebumps talking about it, like we have the power to change the world if every single one of us felt good about ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a complete tangent, but- No, no, I, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> making a real tangent here. That is your half report reminder for those of you who are only joining us for 15 minutes. Turn around now. Back to Courtney. <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah, no, it's, it's awesome that, you know, you're able to kind of share that journey and, and be open about it because not a lot of people in our industry, I think, are. So, yeah. um, but I think most of us, I mean, I don't know, like you said, you have your friend there that hasn't experienced it, but I'm, I feel like most women go through some version of that. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's unfortunate, but I, I, I agree with you about the changing the world because I feel like if we can help, you know, women kind of change that paradigm and that mindset for themselves and they can change that for their daughters and, you know, we right. can finally, finally make some progress here. Right. Yeah. So. Or like even like show up at work and like ask for that raise that you deserve because you hold your weight on your team or like mm -hmm. get out of a relationship or ask for what you need and or like all these like things that bleed over into your whole entire life. I get like so fired up about it because it's more than just, I lift weights and I eat good. Like, right. It's <laughs> bigger than that when you look at it as a whole. Right. No, for sure. And it's not about being perfect all the time either, which is what I love. Like that you, that I see that you share on your social media accounts, right? Like we, you know, we as fitness professionals, you know, the, the normal ones I feel like are the, you know, we're, we're people too. And we don't have to eat yeah. an exact specific way all the time. We can enjoy life and enjoy some of the foods that aren't the healthiest foods all the time. And it's, it's going to be okay. you know Right. Exactly. And it's so funny because I was actually joking with another trainer who works at a gym that I like go to work out at. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it's almost like the stigma. Like we can't admit to like, I had a diet Mountain Dew yesterday because I wanted a diet Mountain Dew. I don't know <laughs> right. the last time I had one, but I was like, I kind of want one, so I'm going to have one, and it looks like kryptonite, but I'm going to drink it anyway, <laughs> and then I'm going to go deadlift, and it's going to be great. But he was saying like, oh yeah, well hang out, and you can see actually how much I eat, like it's embarrassing. And I was like, isn't that the whole reason why we do this? Like, right, right, right. Yeah. Yep. No, exactly. No, I totally, totally agree. <laughs> well, awesome. So I... I love that you have that free guy that's fit in 15 and we have the fit 15 podcast show. So I don't it was know. Perfect. You, yeah. I mean, so obviously they can go get it for free. I don't know if you have any like 
tips from that? Like if you, I guess, actually, here's a question that I've asked people before on the show that are in fitness. So Mm -hmm. if you only had 15 minutes to work out, what are some of the moves you might include in your workout? I would definitely do total body. So I would do, you know, push-ups, body weight squats, maybe like some knee grabs or some sit-ups, uh, maybe some high knees in place. If you can find a way to do like an inverted row. So I would just pick like five basic, a push, a pull, you know, a squat or a lunge, um, and just put those together that use a lot of muscle mass and use your total body and just do as many rounds as you can in like 10 minutes. And that would probably be way better for you than either doing nothing or like, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Then washing yourself at the gym every single day because I find a lot of times women actually need to take a step back versus do more, 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 more. That's so true. Like, I don't know. We, I mean, I know you have some, a few programs that you have for clients and we can chat about that too. But one thing that I find is that, you know, we, I, in my course, we only work out like four to five hours a week and people yeah. are able to drop two sizes. That's like the one I often do. And so people are just surprised that they don't need to spend that much time. And like recovery is important too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, That's huge. and I feel like us, we're always turned on. Like women are always turned on. We're always like, I feel like our stress level is definitely more elevated. Like I just recently got engaged and I'm like, he doesn't care about anything. Like he just like (laughs) walks around town with like this wonderful music in his head and like doesn't like whatever. Like our stress levels are so elevated that sometimes we, instead of training, we actually need like a bubble bath or just like go walk outside and get some sunlight or, you know, more rest and recovery and like taking care of yourselves to like cope with that stress level. Yep. Um, and you can see more results from doing that than crushing yourself in the gym and, and doing two a days basically. Right, right. No, for sure. That's, that's definitely great advice. So I guess any tips maybe, because one thing I love is that you have your degree in health and exercise science. So is there anything that, I mean, obviously that was over a few years that you learned some great tips, anything that you find that you learned during school that like really sticks out as something that a lot of us don't realize or is kind of a myth that yeah. maybe you can help us break a little bit. <laughs> That's so funny. Don't you sometimes feel like you go to school and you learn these things to like go into your field and you're like, I know nothing. <laughs> I feel like Jon Snow out of um, Game of Thrones and she's like, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Um, but there is one thing that I definitely remember standing out to me. And I was like, I think it was one of my capstone classes. And this guy, he's a professor, Dr. Fagenbaum, who's one of the leading guys when it comes to uh, childhood obesity. Mm. We were talking about like diabetes and like all these chronic diseases and conditions. And he was like, what doctors and people don't want to tell people is that a lot of these things can even get reversed from just diet and exercise. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, you have to take an extreme approach, but this is the best medicine that you can give somebody. And I wish that somehow like our paradigm for the health and fitness and like personal training and coaching would shift and that like insurance companies would be willing to pay for someone to have a trainer two to three times a week, as opposed to down the line having to pay medical bills because they then developed diabetes or had a heart attack or, or like a condition um, that it's not just quality of life, but it, oh, I mean, it is quality of life, but that mm-hmm. this is so much more powerful than taking medication for the rest of your life. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And that's awesome that that's something that really stuck out for you. And I hope, yeah, maybe one day, right. We can get, we can get that to shift where we can have more preventative medicine and, yeah. and people being active and, and having that supported, you know, so they can actually afford it from, yeah. from their physicians. Yeah working on it, right? (laughs) Yeah. One step at a time. (laughs) Awesome. Well, Courtney, I could talk with you all day, so maybe we'll have to have you come back sometime, but wanted to give you a chance to share. I mean, I mentioned a little bit about some of the programs that you have, but if you want to share about them a little bit in more detail for people or what might be a good fit for people if they want to work with you. Awesome. Um, So I have that fit for 15. It's fit for 15 workouts. And that's just kind of, I actually put that together because I love to travel it was an idea that I put together of 10 to 15 minute workouts, mostly body weight or like resistance bands, basically stuff everybody has in their closet collecting dust anyway. Right. <laughs> um, you do right at home or like say some like schedule went crazy and they only have X amount of time and they know they want to do something. Um, so those are there. And a lot of those, uh, the PDF, the videos are linked up to the videos. The exercises are linked up to videos mm-hmm. to kind of show people how to do it and walk them through. 
And then I also run an eight week nutrition course that teaches the seven foundational habits that anyone who's ever um, lost weight or gained muscle or changed their body composition or even just their health for the long term, it's those seven foundational things that people learn and ingrain for the rest of their lives. So it isn't a quick fix. It's more of like, let me show you and teach you how to incorporate these habits that most of us already know we should be doing, but haven't figured out how to do for ourselves yet and make it something that becomes second nature. Because my goal is to make it so simple, so easy to almost kind of figure out your body a little bit that you never have to do one of those extreme diets again, that you never feel like you have to go that route because you're consistently putting good stuff in and 20% of the time you're having ice cream and pizza, <laughs> wine, and maybe some diet Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And I would just tell people, because I'll put the links in the show notes, but I feel like people should just go to the page anyways, because I really love it. I was trying not to like ask you this stuff because just to save time for people, but they should just go, <laughs> you have some good like myths and just like facts and myths of just some, some basic things. So even if they're not in a place where they can sign up just yet, just going and checking it out, I think is a good, good thing for people to do. Yeah. Facebook is kind of where I share a lot of that stuff. I'll either share like one to two posts a day. Sometimes I'll share a workout. So it's just Courtney Amber fitness on Facebook. Uh, I put that in the search search bar and I should come up unless there's someone catfishing me. (laughs) I know, right? Or the Facebook algorithm goes like really crazy on us, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Courtney. I really appreciated having you on the show and uh, maybe we'll get you back sometime after, you know, especially you have some, some good training going on this weekend. We'll have to get some more tips from you. Yes. This was amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the fit 15 for show notes and more visit fitarmadillocom slash podcast. See you next time.